Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm your host Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. On this week's episode, we are going to highlight an exciting new program that's being offered by our Emergency Services Department here in the City of Danville. It is a Teen CERT program. And CERT stands for Community Emergency Response Team. Now there's a group of high school students at Galileo Magnet High School who are currently taking part in the Teen CERT program learning a lot of valuable information that they'll be able to utilize in an emergency situation, whether it's at their school, at their home, or anywhere here in the city of Danville. Now this is the first group that's taking part in the Teen CERT program here in Danville, but it's the first of, we hope, many students that will take part as this program expands to other schools, hopefully here in the district. In the second half of the show, we'll take you out to Galileo Magnet High School, introduce you to the CERT coordinator, Al Smith, who is leading that program, and talk to the principal at Galileo Magnet High School, and also some of the students who are taking part in the program. They'll share with you some of the great information that they're learning. But in the first half of the show, as we head into the winter months, I thought it would be a great time to bring a representative from our emergency service department on to bring you some emergency preparedness tips. Now, our emergency service department is involved in emergency preparedness, emergency management, and also they manage the 911 center here in the city of Danville. So they wear many hats, but they're definitely the expert when it comes to emergency preparedness. So our guest today is the Assistant Director for Emergency Service, Taylor Elvis. And Taylor, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And Taylor, um, we've got a great program that we want to talk about in the second half of the show, but I know as we're heading into the winter months, the temperatures are dropping here in the city of Danville. I know you've got a lot of great preparedness tips for our viewers. And let's just start off by um, giving them uh, one or two that they can take with them as we head into the winter months. Well, it's really important to uh, to be prepared so you're not caught off guard. Uh, last winter we had uh, more accumulation of snow and ice than usual. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important to uh, go ahead and have your kit ready. Uh, you can have a kit in your vehicle. Uh, it's very important. So one, you're ready uh, in case your car gets stuck or anything. You have right. blankets, uh, other essential items you might need. Flashlight, flashlight batteries are very important. Okay. It's also important to service your car and get it prepared for winter. Mm -hmm. Having antifreeze, making sure you have some de-icer, windshield wiper fluid. Um, those two things right there can really uh, increase the life uh, and the efficiency and effectiveness of your car in okay. this winter weather. Now, you mentioned an emergency preparedness kit. I know that's something we all should have in our home. Can you uh, shine some light on some of the contents of that kit and what we should have in that kit in our house? Well, when we're preparing for any type of emergency, we'd like to have a preparedness kit. Okay. And it's just basic essential items that you or your family might need. And they have a lot of uh, information out there of what it should contain and stuff. Right. But the most important thing is, does it meet the needs of you and your family? Okay. And no one knows that better than the individual themselves. Right. So we just like to have basic essential items of food uh, and water, having one gallon per person per day. Okay. Of fresh water for sanitation and drinking purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, and just having basic first aid kit and any, any items you might need. Okay, great. And I know when it comes to the winter months, um, some kind of snowstorms can cause power outages. So I know we need to have some um, essential items on hand in case mm -hmm. we lose power for an extended period of time. What are some of those items we would need? Well, having uh, battery operated equipment, such as a radio, Okay. Uh, is very important. One, it allows you to stay in communication with the local government and what's going on in the weather. Okay. Um, also, if power generators, uh, they're becoming more and more popular um, in residential um, houses um, okay. powered by propane and LP gas. So uh, it, if that's something that an individual would like to get, it's a great, uh, a great item that can really enhance your preparedness level. Very good. Now, I know there are NOAA weather radios, because I know um, as of this taping a couple of weeks ago, we had some tornadic activity here in Southside Virginia, and I know my family was watching the local news mm -hmm. to see those warnings and watches. But there is a type of radio that you can purchase that will uh, alert you for these storms. Can you explain that to our viewers who may not be familiar with a NOAA weather radio? What, what it is basically is just a radio that senses a tone. And when severe weather is in our area okay. or could affect us, they'll set off this tone which makes the radio go off. Okay. And when it gives the information out, um, it's not over a, a regular type of radio, it's just specifically for weather. Okay. It's a great uh, item to have in your home or in your business. Mm -hmm. uh, it lets you, gives you a few minutes uh, notice before severe weather is right on top of you. And when you say severe weather, are we talking tornadoes, uh, hurricanes? Or what, what, what type of severe weather are we referring to? Uh, 
thunderstorms, uh, okay. severe winter weather. Uh, severe winter, winter weather. So mm -hmm. that is one. So uh, you know, two or three feet of snow coming in the area, or pretty something. much any type of major weather uh, condition, even okay. including your regular thunderstorm. Okay, so so that's a great item to have. Very good. Now, um, I know you uh, stress to our citizens when you go out on talks is to have a disaster plan ready mm -hmm. in your home. Can you explain to our viewers? Uh, what they need to do to formulate one of these plans? Uh, having a family emergency plan or an individual emergency plan is so essential. Um, if you f if you have to have a plan, uh, mm -hmm. so one you know you know what you're going to do when it happens. Um, a lot of times we don't have a lot of time to prepare when we get notice of severe weather or we might have some large hurricane system coming in. Okay. Um, it's just basic essential items. Of what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Okay. What happens if the infrastructure is not, our normal life is not as it, as it exists today? Right. We, we don't have power and certain utilities and services. How are you and your family going to operate and will you be okay until all those services and uh, can get restored? Very good. Well, that's a great thing to have on hand. And um, when you go back to the kit, last question, we're going to have to take a quick break, but um, with the kit, how long do I need to prepare uh, for being without electricity, whatever it may be, the essential things that I need in that kit. How long do I need to prepare for? The Virginia Department of Emergency Management and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, they suggest three days. Three days. Okay. Within three days we should be able to have um, city services uh, and the infrastructure restored if there were a major okay. incident. Or there will be some sort of shelter um, in place at that time for them to take uh, advantage of. Yeah, the city sets up shelters as they're needed uh, right. in various locations depending on the affected areas. Okay. Taylor, we're going to have to take a quick break, but then when we come back from break, I know we're going to head out to Galileo Magnet High School, and I know you've worked closely with Al Smith, our outreach coordinator for CERT here in the community, and uh, a great program that we've started there at Galileo Magnet High School to see the teens getting involved in CERT. It really is. I hope more people can get involved in the future. Sounds good. So stay tuned. When we come back from break, we'll be out at Galileo Magnet High School with Al Smith, our outreach coordinator for CERT here in the city of Danville. Well, welcome back to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm now at Galileo Magnet School. We're joined by Al Smith, who is an outreach coordinator for CERT here in the city of Danville. And Al, thanks so much for taking the time to join us this week. Yes, sir. Glad to. Now, Al, uh, bring our viewers up to speed a little bit about CERT, who may not be familiar with the Community Emergency Response Team. What is their involvement in our community? The CERT program and teams are to train family members on how to take care of themselves and take care of the family doing any kind of disaster situation, whether it's natural or man-made, uh, in the home or in the workplace or wherever they may be. Now, I know you've worked closely with a lot of members of our community to form these CERT teams throughout the city of Danville. How many CERT teams do we have currently here in the city? Currently, we have 14 CERT teams, uh, and that's 14 neighborhoods. Okay. Uh, we have a little over 300 that has been uh, trained in the CERT program. Now, not only do they um, assist with their neighbors, but they also branch out throughout the community as well during our response times when you all need them, say our emergency services department needs them as well. Yes, sir. When they t look after their family, then if everything's okay, they move to their neighbors within their neighborhood, and whatever action is needed there, there are situations where we will call them in to assist in uh, a larger scale uh, operation here in the city. And I know they have to go through some training before they're cert certified. Can you talk a little bit about that training? Yes, sir. Uh, the training is a minimum of 20 hours. It's a federal standard uh, that comes down through Citizens Corps. Okay. Uh, we go into preparedness uh, for home and family. Then we go into fire suppression, which we will be doing here today, mm -hmm. and fire safety. Then we have two modules on basic first aid, uh, looking at the three killers. Then we go into light search and rescue, which is not the collapsed buildings, but if a family member is pinned with some furniture or something like this, how to get them, un uh, get them free to get them out. 
And I know you all are always looking for new volunteers so they can contact our emergency services department if they're interested in maybe forming a CERT team in their neighborhood? If they're interested in forming a CERT team in the neighborhood or if they're just interested in taking a CERT class, mm -hmm. contact us. Uh, I'm in a process now of working with two neighborhood watch uh, communities that we are attempting to start a, uh, another CERT program uh, training program in mid-January. Uh, okay, great. Well, the reason we're actually here at Galileo Magnet School, you all have teamed up with the Danville Public School System for a new initiative, Teen Cert. Tell us a little bit about how this formed here in the public school. Well, Teen Cert is taking the same training down to our young people uh, in our school systems, which is where we believe that the long-term preparedness really starts is with our young people. Uh, it's the identical program. Uh, we just do it uh, less instructional time per period because it's after school function and it takes a little longer to do it and it's sponsored by the school system, uh, okay. not only Go through ahead. the administrative office uh, downtown, but through the school He's principal here who has been very supportive of the program. Wonderful. And this is the, actually the first group that has gone through the CERT certification here in the community? In Danville, it's the first one through Teen Cert. Now, we have uh, a very extensive program uh, occurring in Pennsylvania County Great. school system, but this is the first one in Danville. Great. Now, on this week's show, we're actually going to follow you along throughout the cast today and then go out and actually, I think they're working with fire extinguishers on today? Yes, sir. We will be doing a little bit of work in a classroom here on the proper uh, mechanics of handling the fire extinguisher and how to use it. Then we will go outside, uh, put on our safety gear, review that a little bit, and then we'll actually start the uh, fires and let them put them out. Yeah. We'll talk to some students and also the principal here at Galileo Magnus School about the Teen Cert program. But Al, um, how many classes are they actually taught throughout this program after school? When does the program wrap up? The program will actually wrap up in March. Oh, okay. uh, the program is 20 hours. Uh, it's two and a half hours a module, and we're only doing half of a module uh, each Monday afternoon. We got an hour and a half after school. Right. And so instead of getting it done in right. the normal uh, 10 weeks, then we're going to be 20 weeks okay. on this. Sounds good. Well, let's get this class started, and we'll follow you along. Yes, sir. When we use a fire extinguisher, we're going to use this system here, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Now, when you get your fire extinguisher in your hand, I in a few minutes, you'll understand this. The pull, there will be a tab, uh, a plastic tab on the extinguisher, so when you pick it up, you can't do anything. It's holding a pin in. So we've got to break that out, and then the pin pulls out. When we pull the pin out, now, the part that we're holding in our hand doesn't move, but the one on the top does. So when we pull the pin out, now we can squeeze the top down. So we're going to pull the pin. We're going to move our uh, fundal part of it up so that you can aim it. Then we're going to do a sweeping motion. We'll lean forward like this, and we'll sweep and squeeze. And as we're doing this, and I'll demonstrate it out there to you before we get into it, but we'll lean over, we'll start sweeping, and we'll take a step in like this, aiming at the base of the fire. If you aim high, it'll go right over top of it, and we'll not put it out. Now, what are the three elements that we have to have on a fire? Heat, fuel, and oxygen. 